Hey CFS Warriors, it's Victoria coming to you to talk to you tonight about baseline. And you know, it's been really busy lately. My kids got out of school. We had family visiting. So I'm really excited to be back in the videos and just to share a little bit because you know, today I just got back from the gym a little while ago and it felt so awesome to be there working out on the machines and swimming a few laps. And so I just wanted to share with you about how I got to this place in my recovery. And you know, baseline is really foundational and most of everything I'm gonna share, I've learned through CFS Health, which is a stellar program through coaching with them and also just from my own experience. And I wanna give a shout out to Annette cause she is a CFS warrior out there who sent me a PM and said, hey, can you do a video on baseline sometimes? So here it is, Annette. And uh, anyway, so to start off with, what is a baseline? A baseline is a level of activity that is sustainable for you at your level of recovery. And so it takes a little time to figure that out, but it's really important, I believe, to do this. And you know, I have a lot of people that have asked me, well, how do you incorporate baseline when you're doing brain retraining or MICL? Because isn't that the opposite? But actually, I have found that the baseline is um, a really great tool that works perfectly with these other uh, modes of healing. And the reason why is healthy people have baselines. You know, when you're out in the work world and you're living life to the full, you're not going full throttle all the time. You know, there are times that you're going to be more active, and when you are, then you're going to balance it with a little backing off and rest time, R&R. &R. And so, even though that looks a lot different for a CFS pers a person recovering from chronic fatigue syndrome, it's essentially the same. And so basically, baseline is finding your sweet spot. And as sometimes we don't like to really be honest about where we are currently in recovery, and it's very important. That's a part of acceptance, acknowledging where you are. And so it's about finding that sweet spot that's sustainable for you and then using that as a platform for progress. So that's what I loved about Baseline is that it has been not a limitation for me, but a structure that I can use to actually stand on and move forward from. So it's not to be a limitation. It's not something locked in place at all the time. But once you have a general idea of where your baseline is, the goal is to move forward from there. The other thing that baseline does is it provides stability and recovery. So what it does is help you stop that push and crash cycle because you're actually aware now of your capacity and you can set your sights on where it is and what you want to do from here. So I like to think of it like CFS is a wilderness and it's like being given a map with a red dot on it. And that red dot says, this is where you are. And so when you're lost out in the wilderness, it really helps to see a map and know where you are in relation to where you want to go. So that's how I view Baseline and how I've used it. It gives me information, and as we know, information and knowledge is power. So this is a really helpful tool that I hope that you'll incorporate into your recovery if you're not doing it already. I'll do another video at some point about how to create a baseline. Um, you know, basically you're looking at what you can do sustainably. And I'm not talking about a few days and then crash for a week. I'm talking about what level is sustainable for you. So one tip for building a baseline is just think about what you can manage on a bad day and then what you can manage on a good day, and then look at that somewhere in between and kind of say, okay, let's cut the difference here. And that could kind of give you an idea of your baseline. You know, I actually, the way I created it when I first started was writing down what I could do, what was easy for me, what caused me to crash, and then that way you kind of get an idea of where you are. So either of those ways are effective. And so as many of you know, for me, you know, a while back, it was a three minute walk a few years ago for me. That was it. That was all I can do. And I'm living a much fuller life now. Um, as I said, I've been working the gym into my baseline. So to give you an example of how this works, a couple of months ago, you know, all along, I've been building up my exercise routine and doing it at home and doing my walks and some biking. And again, that started from three minutes. 
And so then I began to develop other muscles in my recovery, socializing, getting out of the house. All of those were other things I focused my attention on. And so sometimes that, you know, exercise routine would take a back seat depending on what I was doing. Um, but it was always pretty consistent. And so now when I decided I wanted to get back to the gym, funny enough, a couple of years ago I went and just went, hey, once I was back in, it's like there was no stopping me, you know, and I was going crazy by the end of it. I was dancing in front of the mirror with the music cranked up and having a ball. And I crashed for about a month. <laughs> and so then, but that was before I knew any of these principles, any brain retraining or any, you know, baseline or anything. I was just kind of going, I have a good day. I've got energy. So basically what I'm saying is by working this into the gym and the baseline, the way I started doing that was I started going once a week and I just started with a few repetitions on machines. I didn't try to do 10 reps. I had to kind of hold back my achiever beast because that's what I want to do, but I was able to go in and work out on all the machines, and then I was able to just do a dip in the pool for a couple laps because, as I said, I was already up to doing walks at home and biking and doing some strength exercises here, so it wasn't like going from zero to hero, but I tell you what, I felt like a hero when I made it back into the gym. And so what I began to do was do it once a week. I was still doing my other routine at home. And then I was also still doing those other muscles in recovery, socializing and getting out and doing things. And um, so I would do it once a week, then sometimes twice a week. And then sometimes if I had a lot of social stuff going on, which I had a lot going on, I'd back it off and maybe not even go that week and just do my routines at home. So, but that's just kind of like a normal, healthy person. If they've got a lot going on, they're going to kind of back it up, maybe skip the gym that week or not, you know, depending on where they are. So that's how I've incorporated. It's been a couple of months now and um, I'm just really loving it. So I want to give you hope for you that are out there that are bed bound, feeling that your life is absolutely over. You can come through this. Set your mind, set your belief on where you want to be and what you want to do. And I just want to encourage you that you can make it. So consider looking at your recovery, thinking about where you are. Some people, it might just be sitting up in bed for a few minutes a day and then beginning to build from there. But wherever you start, know that you can get out of this wilderness of CFS. So anyway, Warriors, I love you guys. And thank you so much for watching the video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't, go ahead and subscribe and hit that little bell. So whenever I uh, put out a video, I can ring your bell. And always remember, life is not over. It's starting again. And I speak life health and wholeness over you. Take care, warriors.